Okay, so where we left off, we had this fantastic, amazing, coolest uh, AK-47 ha, da, 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 shooting around, doing all this cool stuff. But the shells, uh, which are being done with a middle uh, particle system, were way up here. Okay, and this is the this is the default Paragon asset stuff. Okay, so uh, all this is free stuff, and we want to adjust the particle system. And there's not a lot of documentation, so I'm going to go ahead and show you how to do it. And I just discovered it, so be nice. I'm learning too. Okay, so where to begin? Click on your character. Where we spawn the emitter, you want to get right to it. This is the muzzle flash. Click on it. The muzzle flash is also uh, simulating the spawning of, of shells, cartridge casings. Uh, so here it is. Twin blast, primary muzzle flash. Double click on it. Scroll over a little bit, okay. Uh, shell eject, and then kind of look down here and say initial location. Bam! Click on it like that. All right, fantastic. Go over here to the start location, do the drop down. So it's distribution vector uniform. We want to be uh, distribution vector particle parameter. Not a mouthful at all. Zero this crap out. I don't know why. Just do it. Okay. Um, I don't know if, what this should be. Just zero, zero all this stuff out. Bring down this parameter code. We got DPM normal. I know that's going to be DPM direct. I don't know what DPM stands for. I just know that I'm directly going to affecting zero. And a zero, I'm just assuming, because we got three, zero, one, two, that that stands for X, Y, Z. I don't know. I'm just like, I kind of stumbled through this because I was like, wow, these are amazing uh particles here i'm looking it up on my notes hang just hang on a second uh let me see initial shell location yeah i zeroed them all out i'm just checking um initial sh shell lo location so i wanted to, i was like these are great assets these are great things i just want to use them and so this was the best way i found so just zero all these all out and what we're going to do is we're going to have an, a, a variable come in here and change where the shell goes so everything is zero for now great very important, we got to name this parameter that we just made. Okay, so let's see. What should we do? What do you, I don't know. What do you want to do? Shell position? Shell position? Okay, great. So now we have a variable called shell position. Um, we're only going to be affecting this one thing here. We named it DPM, or it, it is DPM direct. I guess that means it, it can be affected by us directly. Heck if I know. But anyway, doesn't matter. Go back to your third person character crap and then go into your uh, blueprints. Go into your blueprints here and then you're going to go into your weapon actual master. I think. Yes, this is what you want. So this is a cool thing because we set things up properly you can have infinite possibilities to all these different things you're going to be able to add to your weapons and this is what makes it so cool and hopefully so easy so what we want to do is we want to go ahead and add a variable to our weapon actual master and we're going to call it um let's say uh shell eject position Okay, pulse. And we are going to do the drop down here and vector. Okay, that's an XYZ location. Even though we're only using X, we may use XYZ later. Great. So what did this do? When we added it to weapon actual master, if you go back into here, we got a weapon actual master. Remember, we made children. We made three children. We put them in the folder. That means they have everything that the parent has. All the same variables, even the ones we had later on. So weapon actual master and weapon actual folder, all these children now have that variable. Okay, very important to understand. Now, you can change the variable in each of these and it won't change the other. So what does that mean? So that means each variable can have a different value within each of the children. Now, if the parent, for whatever reason, wanted to have like a default value, it could set that and all the children would have it. But if the children change a value, the parent or the, nor the other children have that value changed. Make sense? Maybe? Fine. Go into weapon actual, open full, full, open the full dang thing here, right? 
go to your class defaults and now you're going to see eject shell eject position this is going to allow us to set each variable different by the weapon type and i took notes on it i don't remember exactly what i set it to i think it was um i wanted to move back i think it was 60 negative 60. we can always change it later it's not set in stone so negative 60. we'll come back and change it if we have to compile save go to the weapon actual child 2 open full blueprint editor um where is it negative 60. And you're like well if you're setting them the same then what's the point why didn't you hard code it because the third one here is smaller right the third weapon is like a submachine gun here you can see even see that's what we're messing with it's smaller so we want to move back a little less because here let me show you something so this value negative 45 it's it's saying how many units from the muzzle which is where this thing is this this value is being spawned from back because remember your x value right here it's 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 pointing out the muzzle okay so you're wanting to go backwards to have the shells eject out here near the magazine it comes out of this little thing over here shell ejection port whatever the heck you want to call it yeah on that case it's just like any other i guess um so it'll eject out of here and it'll come flying out but you want it to be here you don't want it to be in any other weird spot and then the other guns you want it to be slightly farther back because it's a longer profile uh weapon right so you come over here ak-47 uh you want it to from here to here is going to be a longer distance so you want it to come out about right here in this shell ejection area just like that now great we got our variable set we have our thing set so that it, it can accept but it none of it's hooked up yet so let's let's hook all that up so we're back in our third person character the muzzle flash okay great now i gotta look at my notes here because this is that new part so we come over here and we drag off the spawn emitter attached come over here and say uh set float parameter okay and it's gonna go hey dude what is your parameters name and we're gonna say i don't remember because i just did it like 10 minutes or 10 seconds ago and i already forgot what it could possibly be so go back to your little thing here and just look if you need to shell pulse okay get back to where you were there you go type it in shell p o s <laughs> you have lots of different names there okay so before we go getting all fancy and doing all sorts of crap give it a crazy value we're gonna throw it 200 plus 200 in the plus x which would mean we're gonna throw it 200 units in front of the weapon which is gonna look crazy but it's gonna allow us to know if we're actually affecting anything before we start trying to nitpick stuff i can't even see anything in this crappy monitor oh see see okay look on the left monitor or the left little view look how far up the shells are so we know we're affecting things beautiful set that down to zero now in our where did we put it where the heck did we yeah we put it in our weapon right we should have put the variable here let's make sure it's in here we did we put it in all the weapons yeah uh, so we got our weapon actual master come out of here and I can't remember what we called it did we call it shell get yes get shell eject pulse position click it right there this is what we put in all those children weapons we put well we first we put it in the parent and then all the children inherited all those variables and then we changed them all and then we got this and we noticed you we were changing just the x so this thing is accepting a float if we want to get a float out of here we just drag off of here and say break break vector great and xyz i mean we can always use it later right now we're not we're just using the x because that's all we want to manipulate so now each weapon has its own value so compile save save all you can go in there and manipulate it to your little heart's desire press play and uh, let's see if i just totally ruined everything okay uh, and, and you know what's great so back this guy up into a corner this is going to be like our zoom view eventually by the way for third person okay why did you was he like skating he was doing something weird anyway 
Look, it's coming out at the exact spot it's supposed to be. Great. Same with the AK. Pretty close. Submachine gun, pretty close. That's where it's supposed to be, that shell ejection. So we've successfully manipulated um, that particle system, which to me is like the coolest thing ever because... You know, I'm not artsy fartsy guy. I don't know all this sort of stuff. So, to me, that was exciting. Um, I didn't know how to do it, and I didn't see a lot of documentation. So there you go. It's pretty cool. Um, I think that's neat. We'll add obviously sound. Okay, so here's the technical stuff for anybody who's wanting to know. So when you fire about firearms, I've done a lot of shooting, a lot of shooting. So when you shoot. Um, the bolt flies back and it goes forward and it usually does it so quick you don't see it you really like you, you go to a range you do a lot if you do a lot of shooting you see you really don't see it a whole lot i wish we had that i still like the animations though that show it right i still wish this weapon had animation so what i'm getting at is yeah it, could it be cool if it was animated that'd be great but in reality you don't even really see the shell i mean you see the shell but you don't see the ejection of the weapon moving a whole lot you see the weapon like bobbing when you shoot, like pow, 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 pow. you'll see that absolutely recoil. You do see, and we'll we're, we can throw that in there, and it's going to be an animation driven by the character. Later on, when we start buying assets, like way down the road, when I do, because I plan on maybe making this a game, wouldn't that be cool? Um, then yeah, all my weapons are going to be animated and all this cool stuff. But I wanted you guys to be able to participate. I wanted everybody to be able to, um, and we got all this cool stuff. Stuff's blowing up. It's freaking awesome. Uh, next episode, see that freaking orange thing? <laughs> yeah, I forgot about that. We're going to go ahead and take care of that in the next episode. So I'll see you on the next one.